This is K-2 Week, sponsored by the Really Good Stuff Digital Learning Collection. Stay tuned to hear how you can get a free trial of over 150 curated apps that are standards aligned for your K-2 classroom for your student iPads or Google Play devices. iPads to differentiate instruction in early elementary education. This is episode 372. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. So we're, today we're talking with Emily Lynch, a third grade teacher at Meadowbrook Elementary in North Kansas City School District. So we are talking today about using iPads to differentiate instruction. Emily, how do we differentiate instruction with iPads? I honestly believe that iPads are the greatest tool to kind of marry differentiation with technology. So right now, what I've been doing in my classroom is I think of the task at hand. So I think about if I'm going to be teaching math, for example, how can I break my students up in my groups, you know, my readiness to my average, to my enrichment group. And when I'm looking at my students, what tool can best suit me? And I think the biggest thing for teachers is finding an app that makes differentiation easier because, I mean, as all teachers know, differentiated is such a long, when you try to differentiate the process, it ends up being such a long process. And so being able to find apps that let you differentiate the content and the process and the product for students, I think that's one of the easiest ways to incorporate into your classroom with iPads. So what are some of your faves? I think right now my favorites are, for math especially, I've really been loving Moby Max. It's a great way to do some fact fluency with students who need some of that concrete number sense, especially when you're working with students who are K through three, K through two, where that number sense is really vital. Also, Khan Academy has been amazing for my students who just need some extra practice, as well as allowing my enrichment students to dive into some things that interest them. I've had students who have come up to me and they're already mastering all the third grade concepts. And they're like, hey, this whole statistics thing sounds really cool. Like, sweet, get on Khan Academy and watch the videos and learn how to do it. So that's been really cool. So for reading, I like to use Newzella. It's really great to be able to change the Lexile level, depending on what my students need. And then also allowing to pull multiple topics. So I might have students who are really interested in a particular video game or particular sports or a particular current event. And I can pull three different articles that can differentiate based on interest and based on readiness. And I'm able to let my kids you know, still meet the task at hand while using something that's more interesting to them and on their level. I also have been loving Class Kick. I'm not sure if that's one you've heard of, but it's really cool to allow kids to do different tasks and allow student helpers. So I can set up a different task on each page and say like group one, you're on page one, group two is here, group three is here, and then allowing them to do that work. And I can watch in real time what they're doing. I can allow student helpers so they can raise their hands virtually and they can help one another on the task. And those have been some of my favorite apps to differentiate in my classroom. So have you made a mistake trying to differentiate on the iPad? Totally. A hundred percent all the time. I think the biggest thing is that it takes a lot of back work to differentiate. And so I think sometimes you get wrapped up in thinking that this one particular tool is going to be best for my kids and you try to use it and it doesn't work. Or of course, you know, like the internet's not working or maybe their device starts to update, something like that. Um, I think for me, the biggest mistake I've probably made is when I've been on a I've had like a device set up where I'm like, okay, I'm going to have group two, they're going to practice the standard. And then you realize that maybe the kids in group two need something even more. And so you have to kind of think on your feet. And I think that comes back to that with itness Mm -hmm. of, you know, being a teacher. And so I think that's where you just got to kind of think on your feet and always have a backup plan or have a next step for students. What is something that you've done that you're like, oh, yes, this so worked and they learned so much? So we actually just got some professional development on blended learning by Eric Schoeninger, and it was absolutely amazing. And he talks a lot about how differentiation and technology work together to create a blended learning environment for students where they can kind of 
integrate and be independent learners. And so I just started inquiry projects in my classroom where we do readers and writers workshop in our school. And after our readers workshop mini lesson and their job for the day, they are allowed to go and do these inquiry projects. And so we've kind of set it up where the students know they have to meet our standards for the day and they know they have to meet the third grade standards, but they can study anything and everything that's interesting to them. And I just kind of let it go from there. And it's been really, really cool to see kids say like, Miss Lynch, reading is difficult for me. So I'm watching a video on this topic and be able to see like the authentic learning that's happening and also the ownership in their learning. And in that regard, it's almost like the students are differentiating themselves. Like they know where their readiness is and they know in this moment, reading this particular article is too hard for me, but I know that I can use like, you know, use like New Zealand to be able to help me. Or I know that I can use a video to help me if those are things that I need and watching them be able to do that is really cool. And also watching them be so invested in their learning, because as we all know, as a teacher, sometimes you're students just end up looking like they're bored, even when you think what you're doing is really engaging or they go off and they accomplish the task. And then you see behavior start to arise because they're not interested in what's going on. So having them do that inquiry project as backup work when they're finished with their regular work has been absolutely amazing just to see them be so engaged in their own learning and also just want to learn. And that's my goal as a teacher is I want to empower students to want to learn for the rest of their life. And I think those projects have been a great way to do that. You told me before we started recording that you feel like you were just totally called to this profession. Why are you so in love with teaching? You know, I... There is just something about education in general that I am wildly passionate about. I could talk to anyone and everyone for hours about how education is life-changing. I teach in a school that's lower income, and I love being able to empower those students and see like light bulbs go off when they realize, like, oh, I can be that. Like, I can do that. And I think sometimes when we work in those populations, you see kids who feel kind of deflated or they don't think that they can get out of, you know, a cycle of poverty. And I think that's what kind of motivates me every day is I think that I can come in and break that fourth wall, especially with technology. You know, you can break the fourth wall of your classroom and bring in Skype sessions with experts and just being able to allow them to see what they can be and what they can do. I love seeing that light bulb go off. And I think that's why I've always been drawn to teaching is being able to see like just this realization that someone can be more than what they've ever thought of and they can dream big and they can reach those dreams with hard work. Give me an example of something you've seen lately that really got you excited. One of those stories of of a breakthrough. I had a student last year. He was very, very, very gifted in the classroom. And he, I mean, anything and everything I gave him was way too easy. He like he could accomplish anything. And it was almost like he liked being at school. I could tell I had a relationship with him, but he was not invested in the classroom. He would do his work, he would comply, but then he kind of just, you could tell was bored. And so we had kind of started the inquiry projects and I asked him what he was interested in. And he had told me the math game called Prodigy. And we, I contacted Prodigy on Twitter. I just tweeted and said, Hey, Prodigy, I have a student interested. Is there any way that we can set up a Skype session? And Prodigy was amazing. And they actually set up a Skype session with one of their developers. And he became so invested in coding and creating his own version of Prodigy. And that was amazing to see because he went from being this kid who was not challenged in the classroom at all to being challenged in the classroom. He started like actually being invested in his learning. He started wanting to be in the classroom and you could tell like constantly he was working towards growth and trying to find out more. And that was something that I had never seen before in him. And it was just really cool to kind of see a connection to something and see him you know, he wants to become a game developer and that's what he's been working towards all the time. And if that's what he needs to be challenged and that's what he needs to grow in my classroom, then I will happily provide any kind of learning, any kind of standards through that lens of game development, just so that I can help him reach his goals and help him succeed in whatever it is. It's so about finding those, those things that kids love. I mean, if a kid tells me their pet's name, I'll write it down and I'll ask about their pets. I mean, what is it that unlocks their passion and their excitement? And isn't that, you know, we want to differentiate with the apps and the tools and everything, but isn't 
tapping into those passions kind of like a, a, a great secret of teachers who differentiate well? I completely agree. Yes, 100%. I think that when we differentiate, I think as teachers, it's easiest for easiest for us to always think, how can I make this on a student's reading level? How can I make this process you know, easier? But I think when you're understanding the mastery goal that you're wanting to work towards and you know that you're giving students proper support, I think we also do have to think about differentiating based on interest and how that is vital to engagement and how that is vital to building relationships with students and really making sure that that, I think that is what's going to lead them towards success when we're able to really tap into what they're most interested in and getting them engaged in the classroom. Does differentiating ever feel overwhelming to you? Yes, all the time. I think for anybody, it's going to feel overwhelming. I just completed my master's degree at William Jewell College, and I got a degree in differentiated instruction. And we spent an entire year doing a research project on differentiating our classroom. And I think that was the moment I realized that differentiation was much more than I ever thought it was. And I think it will always be overwhelming as a teacher, just because we have so many students in our classroom and we're always looking to see what we can do for each one of them. I think we're blessed in the sense that now we're teaching in an era with technology where there are programs that are trying to make that easier for teachers. But I think just the nature of trying to do what's best for students is a lot of work. And I think that's something that differentiation is just a lot of work, but it's always worth it. Differentiation is a lot of work, but it's always worth it. I couldn't even uh, say anything better myself, Emily. It's just something we need to do. The Really Good Stuff Digital Learning Collection is here. This app is a digital supplemental curriculum solution for K through second grade. Aligned with standards, it includes more than 150 curated apps inside their one simple app to install. I took a recent tour and was blown away when I saw that you can customize a playlist of games for each student based on standards and their personal needs. We can finally get the feedback that we need on apps for young children and meet content standards. Honestly, they just think they're playing a game and having fun. And that's what learning is about. So you'll want to sign up for your free 30-day trial at coolcatteacher.com forward slash really good stuff. And remember, it is only one app. All of the other apps are inside this one simple digital learning collection from really good stuff. Now that's good stuff for every K through second grade iPad or Google Play enabled tablet. Enjoy. Thank you for listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.